so I fell in love with a Mexican girl Night time would find me in Rose's cantina The music would play and Felina would whirl Hey friends, how's it going? So a guitar lesson here teaching you how to play El Paso, the Marty Robbins classic. So here's the two-page PDF chord sheet I made for this lesson. It's got the lyrics and chords and intro tab on the first page and then a bunch of other notes in the second page to help you with strumming patterns and chord progressions and all that stuff. So I'm gonna start with the chords and the verse and the chorus. So I had to like strum this song at first and then in the second half of the lesson, I'm gonna dive into the intro. Intro is a bit trickier and I wanna keep things a bit more accessible out of the gate, but if you wanna jump to the intro, you see the timestamp. Otherwise, let's get right on into the, uh, to the verse and chorus and we'll be to go. Okay, so this song is going to be uh, just a verse and chorus, sort of repeating over and over again, okay? And they use the same progression each time. The chords we're going to need are going to be all standard open chords, right? So we'll need a D chord, we'll need an E minor chord, and we'll need a G chord, okay? It doesn't really matter how you sort of position your fingers on the G, whether you do this or whether you keep the second string open, doesn't really matter. Um, D7 you'll also need. So get used to going from that D to the D7. And then we'll need an A7 chord, okay? And you can substitute a regular A major chord if you want, but A7 is easier, and uh, I'm gonna teach you that in this lesson. So those are the chord shapes we're gonna need. Now, let's look at the chord progressions we're gonna use, right? Because the, the progressions are, are, are what's played during e in each verse and each chorus. So the verse is gonna look like this, right? And I'll teach strumming in a little bit, but basically we wanna understand that there's six counts for each measure here. So you see the pipes I have in my, my transcription here. These represent the beginning and end of a measure. So so uh, we'll go for D for one measure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, E minor, two, three, four, five, six, A seven, two, three, four, five, six, A seven, two, three, D, two, three, four, five, six, D, two, three, four, five, six. Let's talk about what happened there. We notice it's six counts for each measure, but there's one measure that only has three counts. It's gonna be that A seven, okay? So if you just strummed on the one count, and you could sort of hum or sing the song, right? Out in the West Texas town of El Paso, I fell in love with a Mexican girl. Four, five, six, D, two, three, four, five, six. One more time, right? D, two, three, four, five, six, E minor, two, three, four, five, six, A seven, two, three, four, five, six, A seven, two, three, D, two, three, four, five, six, D, two, three, four, five, six. So that one progression right there is gonna be played three times in each verse. It's gonna repeat. I think there's some verses where he does it actually twice, but um, you can see that the lyrics, you know, sort of understand that idea. And the only difference is the final time you play it in each verse, you're gonna end on a D7 in that final measure, right? So, uh, my love was strong for this Mexican maiden. I was in love, but in vain I could tell D, right? Then D7, two, three, four, five, six. Then we go to the chorus. Now again, I'm gonna show you strumming in a minute here, but I just wanna under I wanna sort of uh, convey that this is the progression we're gonna need for every single verse, right? And you wanna get that six count feeling, sort of, um, you wanna be able to truly feel it, right? And the easy way to do it is break it into two counts of three, right? So one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So, and I have in my chord sheet here, it's 70 beats per minute, but that's if every beat has three counts within it, right? So 70 is a little bit faster, just a tad faster than one beat a second, right? So one, two, right? So this would be their metronome about one, two, three, 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 one, two, that's how you need to think about counting in this song. Now the chorus, it's almost gonna, it's like it changes keys kind of, like G becomes our sort of home bass chord here, right? So we're gonna be on G for three measures, right? One night a wild young cowboy came in, wild as that West Texas. Then we go to D for two measures. Wind, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, then D7 for two measures. D7, two, three, four, five, six, D7, two, three, four, five, six. The second part of the chorus is going to stay on D7 for three and a half measures and then go to a G for one measure and an A7 for one measure. This is a little bit, you know, trickier than most songs usually are. And I find that if you keep the lyrics in mind, it makes it a bit easier to sort of wrap your head around, right? So, dashing and daring, a drink he was sharing with wicked Felina, the girl that I love. So in anger. 
finger I challenged. Then you go to the verse and start it all over again. So let me do that chorus again. I'm just going to sort of um, speak the chords and hum the melody, right? So, G two three four five six G two three four five six G two three four five six D two three four five six D two three four five six D seven 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 two three G two three four five six A seven two three four five six. All right. Hopefully that sort of gives you the idea. It's again, it's six counts per measure, which you can break into two counts of three if you want also. And I'll do a playthrough in a little bit and that'll help sort of convey everything. But let me talk about strumming now because strumming is how you're gonna basically, um, you know, <laughs> strum the song and this can help your sense of rhythm, okay? Three different patterns I have here. You can use whichever you like. The first one that I would recommend sort of wrapping your head around is just doing a down strum on the one count and the four count. Right, so this truly breaks each six beat measure into three counts twice, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Out in the West Texas town of El Paso, I fell in love with a Mexican girl. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nighttime would find me in Rose's Cantina. Music would play and Felina would whirl. Right? So that's the simplest strumming pattern. Um, that's one I recommend, again, starting with and getting the feel for. Now, the next one, and this is what I saw Marty Robbins doing, if you look at the performance they use in the Ken Burns Country Music documentary that recently came out, is he does uh, the bass note of a chord on the one count, and then on the two and the three count, he'll do a strum of the full chord, and then on the four count, he'll do the bass note, and then again, five and the six full chord, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, Three, four, five, six, right? Bass note down, down, bass note down, down, bass note down, down, bass note down, down. And the progression like that would be, or the verse, we know. Out in, um, out in the West Texas town of El Paso, I fell in love with a Mexican girl. Whoops, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 right? This is trickier because you're it's a bit faster, okay? But it it adds, you know, this is a fast song. It's definitely tricky to play solo with the speed of Marty Robbins. And the last progression I'm gonna show you is even faster. It's gonna be a bass down up down, 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 bass down up down. And this is gonna be on the one, two, and three, four, five, and six. One, two, and three, four, five, and six, right? So if we did the, the verse, uh This one um, is more of an attempt to do a, like a full strum, like almost like a folky or a, a country strum. Um, it, it's up to you, but I would say if you can really get the bass notes on the one and the four count, then you can just sort of keep your, your picking hand going in up-down motions and sort of just grab the strings wherever it, or you know, brush against the strings in a way that feels right for you, right? And that could just be a bass down, down, bass down, down, bass down, down, bass down, down, or you could do bass down, up down, a 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 bass down, up down, bass. It's up to you, right? Find the sort of the the starting or the find the spot you can firmly put your feet on and stand there. Use my uh, crumbing patterns here as suggestions for you to start with. Okay, so let me just do a, a playthrough of the first verse and the first chorus, and I'm going to do it as I naturally would do it as a solo guitarist. I'm not 
you know, this is not a song I have down cold. I can't play it and sound as good as Marty Robbins. I can't sing like him. So take all that for granted. I'm going to play it for you for context. And hopefully that's helpful for you. Right? So, hey, real quick note. See the chord that has a parenthesis? That means you only play that chord for three counts. In other words, one half a measure. Every other chord you see typed out, you play for one full measure. In other words, six counts. This is going to happen in the verse, and it's also going to happen in the chorus. I wanted to call this out as you follow along with my PDF chord sheet. And with that said, let's get to this cover. Out in the West Texas town of El Paso, I fell in love with a Mexican girl. Nighttime would find me in Rose's cantina, the music would play and Felina would whirl. Selena, wicked and evil while casting her spell. My love was deep for this Mexican maiden. I was in love, but in vain I could tell. One night a wild young cowboy came in, wild as that West Texas wind. Ooh, can't sing that high, <laughs> right? Dashing and daring the drink he was sharing With wicked Felina, the girl that I love So in anger I challenged his right for the love of this maiden Down went his hand for the gun that he wore There, there you go, you get the idea. I think that the key to this is really memorizing the chord progression, right? And sort of printing that out, get my chord sheet, and get into the, the just understand that's how many measures and how many strums you're going to be doing of each chord, okay? Because when you're following along with the lyrics also, it gets a bit trickier. The last thing I'll show you here is a fun way to do alternating bass notes when you're doing the verse. And this is basically you can do a bass down, down, bass down. So what's going on here is it's following the bass down, down, bass down, down approach. But the difference is on the second bass note, I'm going to alternate the bass string. And usually I'm going to be going down, although sometimes with the A, A7, you go up to the fourth string, right? This is just how I like to do it. This is a fun way to... some sort of guitar challenge to yourself even if you don't want to sing it's a nice little progression so here's the tab for that it's in my pdf as well so you can use that as you please while you're playing or if you want to do some instrumental verses or just play without singing and just practice that's fun too right so um hopefully this gives you what you need again the, fir the first page of my pdf has all the lyrics for every verse with the chords written in line now let's talk about the intro to this song. So um, this is how I learned the intro long ago and how I play it. I cannot say for certain this is the canonical way. I'm not really interested in, you know, showing you the canonical way. This works for me. I like to play it this way. It's fun. I'm teaching it to you. Take it. Your mileage may vary. You know, have fun with it to the extent it helps. Here's the idea, right? And this, this what I'm going to show you here, this might look like a lot of written up stuff, but there's some um, definite method to this madness, and I think it's you, you'll be happy you, 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 you have it, in my opinion. Now, let's look at this first half, second half, okay? The first half is going to be going between a D major chord and the E minor chord, right? But there's a couple nuances here. For the D major, we want to be able to go put our pinky down on that fifth fret of the high E string, right? Whether you do a barred second fret, middle finger on the third fret of the second string, and then put your pinky down, I kind of like to do it this way because it makes the pinky stretch easier. Or you could just do a regular D and then put your pinky up here. Okay? Either way. The important part, though, is you start by doing the thinnest three notes of the D major chord. And then you're going to play the highest string, fifth fret, and then go back down from first to second string. Whoops. Right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six notes total. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six. That fourth note is this one. Then you have to let it go and play the first string again before you go down to the second string. So that's the first thing you want to get comfortable with. You can do it sort of over and over again to get comfortable. Whoops. When I talk, I mess up, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
That's the first thing you need to master. And that's a stretch, right? That can be tricky for you. Um, uh, you could just do the thinnest four strings of the D chord. And uh, if you have pinky issues, and it, it, it all sounds just fine, right? Now next for this E minor. This one's tricky, but it's actually quite fun to play. The key here is if you look at my chord chart little annotations, you're gonna be going from this voicing, the thinnest four strings of an E minor chord, up to this voicing, the thinnest three strings of this sort of barred E minor shape, which is on the seventh, ninth, ninth, eight, seven, right? Fortunately, this is easy. It's not a bar chord, right? Nine, eight, seven, nine, eight, seven, ring finger, middle finger, index finger. Learn this shape if you don't already know it, and just for practice, maybe going from this E minor shape down here to this one up here. But let me talk more about fingering, because this really, really is important here. Um, basically, for the first part, you're going to be doing, starting on the fourth string, um, let's look at your left hand first, okay? You want, this is really important, you want your left index finger on the second fret of the fourth string for those first three notes, okay? And for the first three notes, you're going to pluck them with your thumb on your right hand, index and middle finger. Okay, fourth string, second string fourth string, third string, second string, with your left index finger here. Then what you're gonna do is after you play those first three notes, you're gonna put your left middle finger down on the third fret of the second string. And then with your right hand over here, you're gonna move from fourth, third, second strings to third, second, first string. From here to here. This is really important, and you're gonna see why. You do the first three notes with your index finger in your right hand. Pluck the third string, third fret, second string with your third fret on the second uh, string here, right? It's all in my notes here. Basically, with your right hand, thumb, index, middle, index, middle. Thumb, index, middle, index, middle. Thumb, index, middle, index, middle. Super important. And over with your left hand, you want to do um, index on the, the, the bass note, the fourth string, and then middle finger on the second string. The reason why is you're going to slide up to this position, and you want to have your middle finger go from on the second string. It has to stay on the second string. So your middle finger is going from third fret of the second string to eighth fret of the second string. And your right hand is gonna stay on these thinnest three strings and basically go second string, first string, second string, third string, right? Eighth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret, ninth fret. So that transition here I'll do it slow. Fingering is all written out here, and if you have to rewind this, do it. But the, the cool part is, is you can kind of get that slide sound. And when you slide it up, it kind of can make a sound on its own. So that, that eighth fret on the second string, you almost can get away without even plucking it. Because your slide kind of makes the sound. Then you just do first string, second string, third string. Okay, so. So that's gonna be that, um, that second measure. It's tricky, All right? Watch this again, get the PDF. Here's the first two measures though. Okay, one more time. Now, let's move to the second half of this intro. This is all gonna be these two chord notes, right? These double stops, right? Two different shapes here. This is the great thing about this, is it's only two shapes. The first shape is gonna be a two fret difference, right? For example, 10th fret, 12th fret on the first and second string. Okay, and the second shape is gonna be a one fret difference, right? This is going from ninth to 10th fret. Now, index finger is always playing the thinnest string. And then for the, for the second string, you either can use your middle finger or ring finger. Uh, it's going to be up to you. See how if you have a, tra I have a travel size guitar, so it's thinner frets, it's easier with just doing, right? 
See, I can just do these two fingers, although a lot of the time I will use my index and ring fingers on the 5-7 chord and the 3-5 chord. Because these are the bigger frets, right? It's a further stretch. Then you go back to this second and third fret. Basically though, we're gonna go 10-12 to 9-10 to 7-8 to 7-5 to 5-3 and then to 3-2. And you're gonna have to listen along to the song to get a feel for the rhythm. I kind of do this really casually, right? Okay. Um, and then in the final measure, we're gonna go from seven five to three to five three to three two, right? And I, I do this like this. Because this is what the accompanied guitar is playing, I believe, and it's like a tremolo or whatever that strumming is called that's super fast that I can't do. So here's how I do the intro from beginning to end, right? Okay. And out in the West Texas town of El Paso. So I hope that helped you, and that's all you're gonna need for, uh, for this song. Really, um, again, the intro, it's super tough to do it as fast as Marty Robbins' album version and it um, as sharply. So just take your time with it, be a bit more slow and casual. So that's all you're going to need for El Paso by Marty Robbins. Again, get this PDF over at my website, playsongnotes.com. It is a labor of love, it's handcrafted with care, and it gives you everything you need to know. So it's going to be a great aid for you. And I have lots of other PDFs, as you can see on my wall here, that I do for all my lessons. So check those out at my website, playsongnotes.com. And with that, my friends, I'm going to leave you. Hope you enjoyed this song. Thanks to all of you who requested it. And thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. It means the world to me. And it, I, I can't wait to make more lessons for you all, all the time. So take care. I'm heading out, and uh, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.